Hey everyone, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining Metals, and on today's video, I'm back in Cerro Gordo with Dan Hurd and Brent Underwood, and our mission today is to find some gold. Dan's going to do some metal detecting on the surface, we're going to be looking for gold veins, we're going to be looking for quartz, we're going to go down in the wash, we're going to do some sniping and prospecting, and we look forward to finding some gold. We're headed up to the Jefferson Chimney now. Gonna go look for gold. Yeah, from my reading, there's a report um, that showed that they pulled about two hundred thousand dollars worth of gold from this area in 1910, and so there was some gold there at one point. That would be a lot of gold. That's a lot of in 1910. Gold. Yeah, 1910 money. We're making our way there. I just remember where it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of these one of these trips, huh? It's up here somewhere. It's up there. The scary part is you don't really know where it is until you're right on top of it. This is just like a walk in the park for Brent. Dan and I are up at 8,500 <laughs> feet just dying. <laughs> it's hard. Here's the other thing you look for for gold ore. Okay. That's called a Gaussian. Okay. So that's um, a sulfide, so a iron pyrite or something like that, yeah. that has oxidized and rotted away, leaving only things that won't oxidize. Okay. And gold doesn't oxidize, so it would leave the gold there. Right. And this is sort of like a matrix of silica. So it's a matrix of quartz, kind right. of like a sponge. Yeah. It's called a Gaussian, and those Gaussian. are great for finding gold in. All right. So we got a good, a good something. Well, this like volcanic looking stuff. Well, I think they must have been smelting of some sort up here okay. because I have seen a lot of slag okay. uh, kicking around too, and that's possibly what that is. This stuff right here, this pile, uh -huh. looks amazing. Oh. Right. Looks amazing. Two hundred thousand dollars worth, right here. <laughs> yeah. It's all. It's all that sponge. It's all rock, rock right. sponge. Gold prospecting in a silver mine. Love Absolutely. It. Love it. <laughs> I just found gold in my copper mine. Yeah. I'm excited about that. It's nice. around. Yeah, like this. This kind of stuff. Absolutely. This all looks amazing. Yeah. Yeah, We're gonna find some gold yet. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. What do we got here? Oh. Yeah. Should have brought a hammer with us. Yeah, a rock hammer. Yeah. Definitely have copper up here too. Oh, oh yeah. Copper. Nice. Is where the chimney is behind that so that fin rock. Thing, you can't really see it from here, but once you get up there, you'll, you'll see just this dramatic drop off. <laughs> it's just a hole it, yeah, right it's, there. That's it. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Seems like an odd place for a hole to be. Yeah, it's like some. I mean, you guys might know better than me, but apparently, I guess I assume it's like a crack that got filled in with the galena, because apparently the entire. From a surface deposit down 1,100 feet was all pure galena. And most of the mine, like the vast majority of the ore that came out of Cerro Gordo came out of the Jefferson Chimney. Oh, okay. So, so it's just a huge pocket. A huge pocket went all the way down. All the way down. Did they pull it out the surface right here? I think at first they were pulling surface deposits. Yeah, that's like, to my understanding, it was a surface deposit then went way down. And I think that from then on, they started sinking the shaft, like I was saying, like kind of between these two, to then mine up, you know, let it go down and all that. Yeah, because we're, I don't know what 100 or 200 feet above the yeah. shaft. Yeah. So I can have you come up this? So this I've, I've I've roped down into this and I roped down and then I got to this level and then I went and I realized that I was on the 86 level behind a collapse that you can't get to from the main hoist. So I was behind the collapse. Um, and so you roped down like 300 feet to, yeah, to the 86 level. It's a weird. It took about. 700 feet of rope but we were doing like little zigzags to like oh. go straight down um because they've left little um what are they called like pillars pillars yeah along the way down so that way the rock i guess didn't fall on itself <laughs> yeah so we, we would rappel down to a pillar hang out put the rope around that pillar go down the other way kind of shoots and ladders we've made it up to the jefferson chimney portal collar crack in the earth, in the earth. hole of doom here I love it. Go over there, you start, you can see, open to look in there. Whoa. 
And it kind of goes and goes. You can see it was even those columns, like I was saying. Yeah, those pillars. Pillars. Man. Yeah, it, uh, I don't know how I get in there. Look, you know, over there in the world, but you can kind of start seeing the pit of death, basically. Oh, boy. <laughs> and the terrifying part of this is we came upon this one hiking from above. Oh, so, like, yeah. You're hiking <laughs> down the hill, do, 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 and then, you know, this isn't wider than what, like four or five feet? Yeah. If you if you would have come down and slipped <laughs> right down. So, yeah. So this was like the discovery. This, this is was, where it all yeah. happened. This started. Is, this, there was a surface deposit somewhere around here-ish, and then they started going down. And this was the big, the big strike. I think it was eleven hundred feet down. Such a small exposure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if, and it's like behind this space, so it, it feels very crazy that they discovered this here. Right. Right here. Yeah. Oh, I got some gloves. Been two years. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Wow, that is a long way down. So you rope down. Yeah, tied up to that bush right there. That bush, that yeah. little, what is that, a bush, yeah. desert bush. Yeah, like a, a Fedra plant. And then How just, far down does this go? Uh, 1,100 feet. 1,100 feet straight down of lead. You tied off to the bush and then just went down to yeah, the down next down. pillar. Or... Went for it. That looks like a very solid bush to tie I off to. It's got deep roots, it's, it's in the desert. very solid, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Avoided the barbed wire. <laughs> Man. But yeah, there's like a, so you go down and then about 50 feet down, they drove a, um, an edit that way for some reason. They started oh. going this way, back maybe towards the surface, but it doesn't go all the way to the outside. And then that one, it goes back maybe like 100 feet. There's a bunch of uh, just cases of dynamite still that I think they just didn't want to deal with. So they okay. stacked them. So then, then you go down more, then it kind of gets into like a very narrow little bit. And then you go, and then it opens up huge, like this massive cavern that's probably like 80 feet across and like 100 feet tall that you get to. And then from there, it continues kind of in this type of situation, going down and down and down. And then it opens up again to just this massive opening that's, like I said, like hundreds of feet, probably like 80 feet across. And then on that level, I saw um, track. And so then I went onto the track and then I started going along the track and I realized that I was on the 86, but behind a collapse that I couldn't get to from the main shaft. So we got to the shaft, we got to a collapse, but then I was behind that collapse. So I kind of triangulated where I was. Oh, wow. And so we got to there. Um, yeah, it took... Is this the one where at some point it's collapsed in with big rocks this and, is, this is and plugged yeah, somewhere? Yeah, this is it. Oh, yeah, so about, I would say 100 feet below the 86, so maybe, well, how far are we above this? Like, 400 feet below this, uh -huh. there's some big boulders that have kind of like wedged themselves together that make getting past that difficult. Okay. Um, I imagine that there may be a way of moving stuff around, but I think over time things are falling in. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, and so. Yeah, the earth doesn't like holes in, yeah, inside. In this crack. And it's up here somewhere they say that there's some gold showing. Correct, yeah. Uh, and the, at, old... at the collar, at the surface here. Yeah, there's a prospectus showing that they were trying to raise money. And they said they had just pulled about that amount, $200,000, out of this area. And that they were raising some money to potentially further develop it. And from my understanding, that they never raised the money to further develop it. Okay. Huh. And here we are. And here we are. But I wonder, too, like, even looking at this now, like, I don't... I wonder where that seam of Galena was, you know? I think you're standing on it. Like right here, basically? I think so, yeah. Just like went straight across. Because that looks intentionally left. Right? Yep, pillar for sure. So they left that. What are these, stoles? Is that the name of these? Stoles, yep. So they put some stoles in. But then, like, why isn't there Galena in the pillar? Yeah, right. There, sh there should be. I right. bet you there is. It's just oxidized and yeah, weathered. weathered and away. You can't really see that that's right. what you're looking at. They might be all that that black, that black stuff. Yeah. Yep, might be the Galena seam. And and I it, bet you if you dug down here, you'd find it right below our feet. It might be pinched off so much that it's only an inch thick and right. it wasn't worth Right, they're, they're tied. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they left that pillar actually because there's a, a section of waste in between. There's a little yeah. slip on the right and then the main ore body that curves around underneath and right. kind of comes together into the, yep. the and main. And they took those that just fall out. Yeah, well, and they, they probably left it because there was that waste in there right. that, that wasn't valuable. I mean, if, there, if you have to leave a pillar, leave it where yeah. the There's vein waste. is, yep, where the waste is. Can we walk around no. to the other yeah, side? Is absolutely. that accessible? Yeah, we can go above. Because that looks goldish over there. Okay. Yeah. Goldish. Goldish. You got Dan the gold bug out here. Get the 
proper terminology. Goldish. 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 Yeah. Looks goldish. Oh, this is a cool view of the whole, yeah, the whole town. town up here and the hotel going up. Yep. Hoist house. Dump. dump. It's a massive dump. Yeah. And you can see all the little prospecting they were doing all around. Like, see up there, like, they're poking around everywhere pretty much. Oh, yeah. And even on that hillside over there, you'd be poking around there, over there, over there. The dump piles show up so well in the desert. Yeah. You don't get all that overgrowth like you guys. Yeah, oh yeah, it just in in 20 years you can't even tell. The hole. It's a very little hole. Too. Yeah. Doesn't look bad from here, but imagine starting to slip down there and realizing that you're falling a very long way. Uh-huh. Dan's going in. Number one thing we look for for gold is iron. Okay. So iron is the first giveaway. Yeah. Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sur a foot away from a certain death here. <laughs> yeah. Surprised yourself yeah, a little bit. Huh? On you. <laughs> there you go. Yep. You got a view there? You got a view, yeah. A view down <laughs> 1100 feet. <laughs> that looks like it might be the continuation of the trace. Yeah, it does. Yeah, here, kind of. As with so many ore bodies, you know, you could have sulfides in one spot, like quartz in another. Yeah. Yep. Calcium out the third spot. And it definitely looks like the iron and quartz have pushed this way. They're not seeing any evidence of galena here. Right. But it does look to be straight on the same, the same line. But you would think to have two hundred thousand dollars worth of production there's like some there'd be some serious workings there would be a hole for there, sure yeah they're, they're, unless they were pulling it out of inside as they go what's that big room i got to and then they're taking out the 86 but they're just using the jefferson chimney as like the geographical location you know what i mean that could be yeah because i mean technically near the collar could be right. 300 could, feet yeah, down it could be that that pile right there right. too that's it's true that's, that's well. still near the collar yeah. yeah like from my understanding a couple miners did that and they were trying to hide it from the owners, you know, and then the owners quickly caught on. And I think that they did a pretty good job of going back through them. Through the tailings sure to get not, the like, gold out. They got all of them, but there's an article, I'll try to find it tonight. Um, but it was like ounces worth of nugget, you know, like many, like multiple ounces in one nugget. Which, of gold nuggets? Yeah. Here. In the, from the tailings? Yeah. Hard rock, hard rock nuggets. <laughs> hard rock, obviously. yeah, sure. Yeah. Just it, gold lace. It's really through. unfortunate you have such a lack of water here in California. Yeah. Because uh, if if you had the water we had back home, right, you would run just yards and yards of this stuff yeah. and see yeah. at every spot, every dump like this, you just right. run a yard of it and see what's in it. Right. Yeah. But that's hard to do with no water. No water, yeah. Well, if there's gold like that, there's gold in the wash. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that, that's where I want to go. That's yeah. the wash that drains this whole bowl. Yep. will have a cross section of everything in it. Okay. Yeah. And especially if you find those crevices in bedrock where everything washes over one crevice, if there's gold in the slush going down, right, it's going to drop into that crevice. Right. And it all seems to go to that wash that basically is a road. Yep. And then right there, we see the road upper. It, it hugs down. And actually that hike is kind of interesting because that wash leads down into what was lower Cerro Gordo. So before there was, when they say Cerro Gordo, they're referring to a number of mining camps altogether. Right. So the main town, primary town is here, but like down the wash about half a mile was lower Cerro Gordo. And the main mine there was the Ignacio mine, which was like one of the first big silver mines here. Um, and most of the structures down there have been gone because it's in a wash. Right? Yep. <laughs> um, but that'll lead you right through lower Cerro Gordo and everything like that. Perfect. Cool. cool. Perfect. That's where we'll go a little later then. Yeah, it's a pretty cool area. And you've had two or three years of crazy weather with big washes coming out of yeah. here. Yeah. So a lot of new material will have gone through. Yeah, we've been finding all sorts of new bottles, you know, tins and stuff like that. That's always what I'm looking for because I yep. don't know what I'm looking for. But yeah, we've had two years ago we had a thousand year flood that completely wiped out death valley and then this year we had tropical storm hillary which once again wiped out death valley and our road both times our road got brought down right to bedrock um, and so all of the fill that's on it all of the washers should have a lot of new material in them perfect
while we're hiking around looking for gold and we're finding these really nice rocks we're looking for quartz because typically that's where the gold hangs out and we're finding some good float of it on the hill we're up above the jefferson chimney we're coming up to this other dump pile i just stumbled on a chute that's a wash that's a wash and a half yeah I think it was Doug. You think so? I think so. It's straight. Yeah, let's go up and see what we have here. I wonder if this was a, well, let's go see what this, ow. Pokey trees, ow. I wonder what's up. Looks like it goes up around the corner there. Let's check it out. Ooh, look here. Oh, oh, look. There's a piece. There's a piece. There's one with a vein right through it. Look at these. Yeah, oh yeah. All of them. All over. All over. Even that red stuff. Someone once told me they liked the red for uh, gold ore. Like the red iron staining. <clears throat> I don't know what why that would make a difference. The story, or the, the saying I've always heard is... Gold rides an iron horse, and iron's red. So the redder the better. The redder the better. Did you guys find what you're looking for? Like, yeah, it's just a one chunk that was laying on the ground was a very red rust rather than that orange rust. Okay. And I do remember hearing once that red right. rust is good. But, right. Oh yeah, see like this is a big chunk of quartz right here. And it's frozen to the ground, but... <laughs> Maybe they just pick out those big hunks of quartz and throw them down this chute. That could be, yeah. I mean, just roll it down the hill. Oh, this one. That's all quartz, too. Quartz and iron. Yeah. Yeah, this, we're, in, we're in a good zone here to look for gold. I think we might have found... A little bit of a quartz vein here. It's not, I mean, it's not like sticking up out of the rock, but there's pieces here, there's pieces all up there. Absolutely. Kind of just, just up from where you were. It must come in a line from there because it was exposed there. That That's, well, I, it felt like bedrock, but it, everything's frozen there, in. So. Yeah, you can't, it's hard to tell. But I mean, look, it's just it's just quartz boulders everywhere. Yeah. It, we're right, we're right here. But no, we're definitely, well, there's more quartz here. All, all through. Yeah, here's a bunch of it. Exposed. There's definitely, well now, look at this. They, there's a trail that switched back and they dug through it. The plot thickens. We're finding a lot of old workings up here, old dumps. That chute we found dug into the ground comes right up to this old portal here. It's collapsed since, but we think that they were bringing their ore right out from that portal and rolling it right down this hand dug chute and Brent maybe mistakenly, maybe on purpose, maybe a little bit of both, threw a rock down there and it just rolled right down the trench, down to the bottom. Dan's gonna try. Uh, I'm kind of in the wrong spot, so let's give it a try. Oh, we'll get in there. Yep. There it goes, in the chute. There it is. Oh, awesome. Head piece. out of the chute. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's still going. Wouldn't that be a way to mine? Yeah. <laughs> Let gravity do the work for you. If you can't afford an aerial tram, dig a, dig a, a trench. trench. <laughs> Never seen that. And this is what we were looking for. This vein running right up behind me. Quartz vein in the country rock. That is what you'd look for when you're prospecting for gold. I don't see, there's no workings up here. But it sure looks good. Quartz continuous 
right up through the limestone. This is where you'd be looking for your gold. And it just kind of spiders all over the outcrop here. Series of parallel veins. This is what would get the old boys excited. excited. <laughs> old boy Dan's excited. And yes, I'm breathing really hard because I'm at 8,600 feet up and the air is very thin. And Brent's not even breaking a sweat. He's not even breathing hard at all. Here. Brent lives up here. <laughs> yep, court stock work. Dan found him at it. Ooh. I'm at it again. <laughs> That joke started to get really old. Yeah, right, yeah. You you used that one before, I bet? <laughs> yeah, you can walk in the door. You bring your, bring your light? Other no. than your phone? Nope, it's my phone. So if they came out here and they just dumped it right off the hill. Right down the hill. Into the wash. Ooh, look, a little a little stockpile here. Mm hmm That's the good stuff. This is the stuff they were looking for, and it's quartz. Look at this interesting stuff. They thought that was good, but I don't think it is. I thought I was going back tomorrow to do the video, but as we were walking up the hill, we discovered a new attic. And of course, Brett's got to go check it out. See how my bears are inside. This is my, uh, my least favorite thing in the desert. Snake? No. Garbage. Birthday blues. Birthday blues. Ah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Brent! <laughs> it only goes about 40 feet in there, but looks like some animals making the nest. Yeah. Yeah, some bedding back there. Yeah, these are everywhere out here. Yeah, I nest. find them all over too. Yeah. I want to see, is there a, is there a uh, vein? I want to see if they intersect with quartz. Decomposed quartz stuff. Okay, I'm going in. <sighs> There's that stuff we saw in a little stockpile. I want to find a quartz vein though, that's what I really want. I don't have my headlamp, so we're using my phone light. Oh yeah, here it is, right here. Quartz vein. I intersected it. Now, where did it go? It goes somewhere. It's not on the face. There's a little fault. It looks like they were following in. And definitely a quartz vein. Some bugs with crystals. What is this? Is this just like, I think this is brecciated quartz vein. And they followed it back in and then it kind of ballooned out into a into a vein. That's interesting. Not a lot of interesting stuff in it. There's a nice little bug full of crystals. The Dan thought he saw an added up above, so let's go up above so we can find it up there. Well, the added is right down there by my bag and I'm coming up above and there is a surface exposure of the quartz vein right here it goes up the hill right here it doesn't look terribly interesting on the surface but I think this is the fault that we saw underground that brecciates the quartz. It runs right down to where Dan and Brent are. And then the quartz vein kind of wraps up and off to the right. Some iron standing on the surface, some nice red stuff. This, this is what they were looking for. 
a little prospect at it. It never really amounted to anything. Very cool fault exposure with the vein just off to the south. We're following this trench down and it goes way down the mountain. It was an unbelievable amount of work to dig this thing. And I was just telling Brent a story about the only time I've ever heard something like this is back in my mining district. They, I, I read an old report about guys buckskinning ore down the hill and they would, the prospect or the, the vein was way up high on the mountain and they'd go in in the early spring where there was still a bunch of snow and they would get the ore out, put it in these leather buckskin bags and they'd start to shoot down the snow because in the Cascades we get like 20 or 30 feet of snow. Woo! Now I'm going to tell you this story sitting down. <laughs> But they would get a little shoot going in the snow and they'd ride these buckskin bags down to the mill at the bottom where there wasn't as much snow and then they'd mill them. And we were talking about this trench, maybe in the winter they did the same thing. They, this would be lined with snow and they could just sled stuff down or ride it down. So we're interested to see where it goes. Because if they were sending ore down and they were milling it, there might be some sort of residual mill stuff at the bottom. Very cool. <laughs> That'd be an iron stone of some sort, I'd assume, because of what we're where we are up here. Yeah. But not much more than that I can tell you about it. Brecciated. Brecciated means a whole bunch of fragments of rock glued together with another rock. Yeah. But other than that... We've crushed some stuff that looks like that, that is kind of like a jasper, ironstone jasper, As you Ironstone call it? jasper, yeah, yeah. That's very cool. And the, the jasper is the cement. Of, in, in, this, in this case, case, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Have you seen any more of that around? No. That'd be cool if you cut it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Cool slabber. All right. Well, here's the last little remnants of our trench, and it just kind of comes down here and ends. Yeah, this was, I, I have no idea what they were doing here. This baffles me, no end. Because when you're talking about gold, a little one stamp mill, you don't need a lot of space. Right. There is kind of a little flat spot over here, right there. But I expect to see tailings or something if they're milling here, which I don't see anything. So it is a mystery. I don't know what the shoot was for. Or maybe they got it down here. I don't see any trail around. It's not like they loaded it onto a donkey here. It's a mystery. Well, maybe we're solving the puzzle here. There may have been a little mill right up there. And that all that uniform crush there is some of their tailings. There was a rock wall up there. I don't know if I got it on video. Could have been a foundation. A foundation for a little stamp mill or something? Yeah. Somebody did a lot of work to dig that trench and bring all that stuff down. Because there's no there's no evidence of any workings there. It's a rock wall and a flat foundation spot and then a pile of crushed rock below it. Maybe that's what they were doing. I like it. I like that what, conclusion what? that we came to there. There well, we go. It's always, it always <laughs> fascinating yeah. just trying to figure out what it looked like a hundred or two hundred years ago. Yeah. Well, you never, you're never going to have the answer. You, all you can do is just tell a story. Tell a good story. I think that was the best story we got for that. Best story. <laughs> best story today. Yeah. But it's it's in a nice spot compared to the Jefferson chimney too. Oh yeah. So a Jefferson shoot? Maybe. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If there was a mill there, maybe this trench going down here was the way that they took whatever it was straight down. And there is court evidence of quartz everywhere over on that side. So quite possible that's where they were getting the gold from. Yeah. I'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully. Go find some gold. That is just a huge quartz boulder, isn't it? Yep. That would be mineable width. If it was in the vein or in, in the ground. There's another one. Those are big pieces. Came down that shoot of theirs. Yeah, yeah, they got 
got carried away. <laughs> yeah, those are big pieces. I'm on my way up to see Dan. I can hear his detector going off from down here on the dump pile, but I can't see him. So I'm gonna go on a little goose chase here to find him. But I think he's up there. I wanna see all the nuggets he found. I don't know where he is. I heard him up here somewhere, but now I don't hear him anymore. It is really hard to hike at 8,500 feet. Right over there. There's a Dan bucket. Ah, yeah. Ooh. That was close. Dan. Oh, guy's way up there. Oh, where are you at? Oh, I see him. I see ya. I gotta go up more. Oh, I found Dan at the, almost the top of the mountain. You seem out of breath. Holy cow. This is hard. This is a big hike up here. Yeah, the air is so thin. Well, I've been detecting signals all day. Some good, some bad. A lot of tin cans, a lot of garbage. Yeah. I've got a bucket full of rocks that could have something. Oh, nice. Yep. I think I just found the one pit that I really wanted to detect. So just about to go up on top of it. Nice. Are you finding, are the good rocks in quartz or just in limestone? The bucket I got down below was all a, a goss and it was all just a decomposed sulfide of some sort. Okay. Yeah. And that's kind of what the article was saying to look for. Well, it said to look for quartz that had red on the surface. Okay. That's not quite what I was finding. We got a bucket or something. No. That sounds good. <sighs> and the ground's frozen. That makes it harder. Yeah. It ain't no nugget. <laughs> <laughs> Keep looking. Yep. So you have your detector to tune out iron is that correct so you're trying to miss all the cans in the iron yes, trash yes, right now i do i do um it is only somewhat effective doing that okay yeah and uh you can also once you get a an ear for it you can tell the signals that are probably false gold signals too oh, okay yeah this one is a false gold yeah okay it's too slow it's not zippy enough and it's signaling one direction, but not the other. And they're kind of just telling me it's not a good signal. I see. Yeah. So pass on it. Pass on that. It's a lot of effort to dig a signal. You so want to be... to dig the good ones. I like that one. And you go down an inch and test and... See if it's on the surface. Signal sounding even better. Ooh, the ground is frozen. frozen. It's a nice sounding signal. And there it is. Uh-huh. Some little decorative belt piece. Brass or copper or something. Yeah. So it was, it's not iron. It's very soft. Yeah. But that's what it would sound like if it was gold. Yep, that sounded like, that sound like gold. <laughs> oh, that's my boot. That's worth keeping. There's little patterns and stuff on it. Is there? An artifact from Sarah Gordo. Nice. You licked it, I won't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what you'll find is this black stuff is oxidized galena. Oh, okay. So like that would be a sizable piece of gold if it was gold. If that was gold, that would be a very visible piece. That's the stuff. That's he, the stuff. That's the stuff. I mean, it looks good. Right? Some of it looks very strange too. Uh, some of it is just a sponge of silica. Oh. 
Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, look, look at the look at the bro freshly broken yeah. surface here. Yeah. That's freshly broke. You broke. I that. broke that. That's the fresh surface, oh, okay. and it's just a sponge oh, of okay. silica. Yeah. Are those? Can you tell by the the sponge? Are they like cubic crystal? Yeah. See, like that's a that's a cube. Can you see that? Maybe. Are your if, eyes good if enough? I, <laughs> if I squint real hard and pretend, but they like may have been pyrite cubes that weathered out, and they're mm. and then there's some like this. Feel the, feel this one. Like yes. Yeah. I assume it's just going to be Galena right through. Yeah, fairly dense. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> well, we'll see this what we can fit in the crusher. No, it's like, like a sponge. It's it's light. But it sounds off. It does. It's um, it, it, all these sponge pieces always sounded off on their black, uh, wherever it's black. On the on that face. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And here we go. The first of the detected pieces. Stuff. That one was. Oh, this one. This one is heavy. This one's really heavy. You can do it. That's Dan's detected stuff. Now we go pan. Let's pan. We are getting ready to pan out. Gold. Gold. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Gold. Lots and lots of gold. Gold. Dan is working his way down through his pan. And if you want to see the results, you'll have to check out his channel. It's our last day here at Cerro Gordo. We are going to go down to the wash and look for some gold with Dan. But first, Brett and I are going to take a quick peek in the Omega Tunnel. This has fascinated both Brent and I for a long, long time. This is one way to access the workings of the Union Mine without taking the skip down. It's caved. We've done some previous videos where we've tried to open it up, but we're going to go on a little scouting mission today, get some footage of the tunnel, and make a plan on what we can do and how to open this thing in the future. It's gotten a little more sketchy since the last time we were here. It always does. Yeah. But I imagine if I were... if. The mucker were to work, this all needs to get down to probably that grade, so we can just drive it in and out. Yeah, and you could do that with the mucker. The mucker would just scoop all that out if you wanted. But it, they could probably have like a slight slope, could, could I? Or I need to get this down, you think? No, you could have a you could have a, a little ramp there. To here, but then like kind of keep it in this grade, but then I go back. You would have to go back down yeah. again. Yeah. 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 It's it's not too bad. Okay. I mean, with the mucker, it, it's fast, okay. and you can just gr get to whatever grade you need. Yeah. That's I think I started to start tapping up there, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's there's a lot of stuff to come down up there. Yeah. Not an ideal situation, but you guys poking your head in? Yeah. Okay. Are you coming down? No, no I'm gonna go check out the mine dump. <laughs> I don't like underground. <laughs> Dan's gonna stay and away. That one looks sketchy. Especially this one, yeah. Yeah. Brent and I will take a look here and all oh, this has come down since we were here. Yeah, it's it it doesn't it's slowly caving in because that all of that was flush that metal and so the rock is falling and tumbling into the mine mm. That's great. very terrifying to look up yeah don't don't look up just gently yeah that's there's a lot of a lot of real nasty Well, we'll try and go in here. Um, I gotta just get in there. Uh, huh. This one's new. Whoa. Yeah. And I think if you look above it, it's really wet. Maybe the moisture just loosened it up. Yeah, that's new, huh? Yeah, I think it's just right, maybe right there. All of these look like they're... Yeah. Ready to come down. Yeah. That's on. What 
Yeah, it doesn't look, that doesn't look good at all. No. Yeah, walk softly in here. Even here, though, this isn't, this isn't going to be really big enough for a mucker, do you think? No, the mucker wouldn't fit in here. Okay. No. So it would be like the walk behind dingo situation? Yeah. Which even that would have struggle with like this. Right, you'd have to like dex pan that yeah, or uh, feather and wedge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a lot of timbering in here. Yeah, a lot of timber work. It's almost like this feels like they are like don't go past here. Uh huh. <laughs> Is it, like keep out. Yeah, I don't know why else they would situate that like that. Or is that keep them apart? Mm, probably not right in the middle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, this is dingo for sure in yeah. here. I, do you think it would even get past them like this? The dingo? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I guess. I don't know what the, the bucket. I didn't bring a tape measure. Yeah. I don't know. I've seen enough. <laughs> yeah, we, we know what's back there. We understand what's going on. Yeah, we understand what's going on. I, just, I mostly wanted to see the the width and the height, okay. but yeah, there's no way the mucker would fit in here, yeah. unfortunately. Right. Um, but a dingo and lots of timbers. I mean, all this timber here you could reuse. Yeah. I mean, this, like like where you're standing is fine. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. But basically, it would just be like replicating what they did in here. Yeah, pretty much. They used a lot of wood. They used a lot of wood. And there you'd you'd have to set a lot of stalls back behind us. There's yeah. some big nasty donagers hanging there over your head. Yeah. I don't know how far how far back are we? Like 150 feet at least? Probably yeah. And we're halfway? Yeah. 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 Alright. It'd be a lot of work. It'd be a lot of work. But like you say, I got a lot of yeah, you got a lot of time, and and if you could, if you could open it up, it'd be oh yeah, historic. Yeah, huge, huge accomplishment. All right, let's see if we can get out of here without getting crushed. Yeah, that's a big project. Yeah, that'd be a lot of work. That's that would be a lot of work. Let's go down to the wash and see if we can yeah, find some gold. Some gold. <laughs> we are headed down the wash. Dan guarantees us gold today, so we are on the hunt. We're going to do a little bedrock sniping. We are down in the wash right below Cerro Gordo, and we found this bedrock outcropping that we're really excited about because as the water runs over this stuff over thousands and millions of years, all the gold gets stuck, gets trapped in these cracks like this. And so we've all brought our pry bars and shovels down. We're going to wedge these rocks out, gather up all the fine material that we can from under these rocks. All that right there is really, really good stuff. And the gold will migrate all the way down to the bottom. So we're going to scrape all this up into buckets, take it back up, and pan it. This is just beautiful stuff right here. The rock pulls out really easy. You can get down. A little, a little brush or broom would have been helpful, but it's so soft, it's, it's coming off pretty easy. One of our fears was it was going to be frozen. It doesn't appear to be too bad, but all these little, all this little stuff down in the cracks. This is what will have the gold. Another method of prospecting this would be to use a dry washer, and I'm going to dry wash for the first time on an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that. 
but if we can find some good gold here, it might encourage Brent to get a dry washer. I've been taking a lot of material out of here that's just this kind of dusty brownish stuff, but I pulled out a rock and now I'm getting a lot of really rusty iron red stuff down here, especially at the bottom. This is where your gold is gonna end up. It goes to the very bottom of the crack and all this rust is telling me that these iron bearing minerals that are very, very dense, this is where they've ended up. So this is a really, really good spot. This would be a perfect place for a little shop vac vacuum and you could just suck all this little fine stuff up. Make sure you're not missing any gold. But this looks really, really good. Well, Brent told me a story earlier that I wanted to catch on video because I didn't quite understand where the original kind of strike and smelters were. So we're up here in this wash just below town. Yeah, we're in between what's commonly referred to as Cerro Gordo, which these days is, you know, where the hotel is, where the main union mine is. But back in the day, there's also a lower Cerro Gordo, which is just below us in this wash. And lower Cerro Gordo, as they were walking up the wash, is kind of where they first found the big surface deposits of the Galena. And so below us, there's an area called the Ignacio Mine, which is the primary mine that they're working then. And so there they came upon, you know, large pieces of Galena. They set up what are called vasos, which are small, um, kind of adobe smelters. And so they were working it just in small batches, heating it as high as they could in these little kind of furnaces that almost look like a little tent. Okay. Um, and then that was the big strike, but then that ore made its way to Fort Independence, which led more people to get up here, which eventually led to the massive strikes up at the Jefferson Chimney, Union Chimney, and the Union Mine. But the primary and original strike was down here in Lower Cerro Gordo. And so they were just working the float. That's it. They, they were they, they were finding like rocks and boulders of Galena in the in the Correct. wash yeah. and just smelting those. Yeah. And it wasn't until Beaudry? Uh, Belshan Beaudry, yeah. Belshan Beaudry came up and they, they were like, hey, let's follow this float uphill. And they discovered the, the actual load deposit up above. Yeah. And if we go down further, the, the deposit, there was a deposit at the Ignacio because these days there's a, they just didn't, uh, uh, a hole, you know, they didn't have to go underground. Okay, just, just like open trench. Yeah, they opened a trench up down there. You can still see it. And that was kind of the beginning. And then they did put some workings down there. They're the biggest in Lower Cerro Gordo is this mine called the Potosi Tunnel that I've been trying forever to get into. Oh. Apparently the plan with the Potosi, it came on a little bit afterwards, but its plan was to intersect every major mine in both Lower Cerro Gordo and Upper Cerro Gordo. So they wanted to drive it back. And I guess at this level, they were gonna intersect in what, probably the four or 500 level of the Union Mine. Mm. They plan on intersecting the Ignacio, the other ones in Lower Cerro Gordo, and also pushing it all the way back to the Union. We don't know if they ever made it, but I haven't gotten into the portal yet. It's caved down at the, at the portal, yeah. right at the portal? Yeah. Another use for a mucker. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, so that's, like I said, I didn't realize that they were just processing the float. I thought yeah. the original smelters were way up on the hill, yeah. right at the strike. The original ones are around the corner here. There's even some remnants of one, um, yeah. but they were just these kind of adobe clay structures that they would throw them in and just do what they could. Cool. You're finding good stuff? Finding some great stuff. I should have warned you guys to bring gloves. This is really hard on your hands, scraping the bedrock and like a whisk broom or something helps, but I just use gloves usually. And I apologize for not <laughs> warning you guys. <laughs> a, Brent and I never come prepared for anything. So that's kind of our it's MO. For the course. Yeah, for sure. And the big shovels that we brought, obviously we don't need. So, yeah, they're not doing much. <laughs> not gonna need them. But I'm finding some really good, this is like ideal conditions for sniping cracks. You can't get better than this. The bedrock conditions are perfect. The gulch here is draining such a great big bowl. And the fact that we are in the richest mineralized bedrock material you can find, you can't get better than this. Now, gold, that's another question. We know most of the mineralization up there is silver lead and zinc, but we also know there's gold there. So we'll see. We'll see. I moved up into the sun a little bit where it's warmer. And look at this crack. It's pretty much perpendicular to the water flow. Water flows this way, a big deep crack, lots of bedrock holding it secure. It's been there a long time. I'm excited to see what's at the bottom of this one. Look at these big, huge slabs of uh, frozen, but material that got down in that crack. It runs all the way down there. Let's see if I can do this. You 
just scrape it off with a hammer. That is all good stuff. I've got about a third of a bucket of material here. We're gonna take that up and pan it out here a little later. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. Dan's gonna let me use his metal detector. Thank you, Dan. I'm gonna go detect some of this bedrock. Let's see if I can find a nugget. I could be finding coins, bullets, other metallic objects. But with the detector, I'll have kind of x-ray vision into the bedrock and I'll have a greater chance of maybe pinpointing a larger piece. Well, Dan's gonna give us a little detector 101 here. Okay, just the basics though, just the basics. Yep, just we the basics. It's set fully automatic for you, so there's no, nothing for you to change. It's computer's gonna do all the thinking for you. So it's turned on, you've turned it on already. We're just gonna find a barren spot of ground on the bedrock and pulse it a few times. This just gives the computer a few moments to uh, understand what the bedrock around here is like. And then there's nothing more for you to do other than swing. And when you hear a beep, we'll have it on discrimination mode. So it's trying to find gold for you or non-ferrous. Okay. When you hear a beep, go back and forth over that area a few times and you want it to be consistent. It beeps every time you pass. Okay. If it beeps one time and then doesn't beep the other, move on. Okay. Move on. What's the bar across the top? Is that the iron bar? Iron yes. discrimination? Okay. So uh, we have it on discrimination right now, uh, which is, there's two different modes. There's a uh, full mode shows you iron and gold. There's the discrimination mode should only show you gold. Okay. The bar at the top will go to the left if it's iron, to the right if it's gold. Right. So if it goes left right now, it shouldn't beep for you. Okay. If it goes right, it should beep. Sometimes it takes the machine a couple passes over a, a piece to figure out what it is. Got it. That one's not consistent enough for me to dig. Okay. So just keep going until you find something that's consistent. That's pretty consistent. Now, a wash like this that's draining an old ghost town, yeah. <laughs> there's gonna be metal everywhere. Yeah. So just dig the really, really good ones. Just dig the good ones. Okay, so would that be a good one? Yep. That's a good one. So consistent beeping way over to the non-ferrous uh, side. No, it's actually not. Not, not so after, great. After I've waved it a bit here. You notice how it's beeping one way and not the other? Uh huh. That's kind of a sign that it's confused. Okay. So I would wait for a perfect one in this situation. A perfect one. Okay, we're looking for the perfect one. Here we go. Metal detector cam. I'm going to stay close to Dan too, so if I find something, he can help me. So you can rub it in. <laughs> I've got a really good signal right there. I've moved it out of the hole. Let's see if I can find it here. Nope. No wedding ring. That'll set it off. Nope. Oh, there we go. Now I'm gonna dump out a little bit. Still in my hand. Gone. What? Oh, what's this? Gold nugget! Gold nugget! No. It's a button. What? I think. A little round thing or a washer. Let me get it cleaned off. Dan, will you lick this for me? Sure. <laughs> so it looks like a little washer or button of some kind. It's real hard, but it's not ferrous. So there we go, our first find. Not gold, but the detector works. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I guess around here, having a lead is not, a lead a, nugget. Is not <laughs> unusual. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that is, that's lead, isn't it? Can you bend one of the little prongs there on the side? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn, put it in your mouth. Oh yeah, it bends, it bends like lead. Is yeah. it? Okay. There now that is a cool find. I actually yeah. think that is awesome. Yeah, lead lead nugget. Yeah. A lead nugget. Might even have some uh, silver still in it. Yeah. Absolutely. 
There you go, Brent. Yeah. That would be easy to uh, just toss in a big coupel. Yeah. Yeah. Just heat just it. Just check it out. Find out. There you go, Brent. Yes. Yours to do with what you will. Well, thank you. Well, I found another little lead nugget here. So I'll give that to Brent. And I did not dig one nail today, not one piece of iron. So I'm really, really impressed with uh, what discrimination? The discrimination. The yeah. discrimination of that machine. Because, I mean, I. I could pass over all that iron and not worry about it. And I just found, I found a couple lead nuggets. I found a brass shell and that first little button. So it works really, really well for discriminating out the iron. But we've got a couple buckets full. We're gonna head up, pan it out and see if we can find any gold. We are working diligently looking for gold. Trying very, very hard to find Brent some Cerro Gordo gold. We are not finding any gold in this stuff at all. Not even little specks. We've got one bucket left to go through. One bucket left. Well, we've panned all of our buckets. Dan's checking my work back there behind me, but it seems like none of us found any gold today. Cerro Gordo is a great lead silver mine, but no gold. Well, even though we didn't find any gold, the adventure is not over because I've got some stuff I'm gonna mail back to myself, and then there'll be a part two coming up where I crush down the rock, Brent and I mined underground, run it through my system, and see if I can find any gold. So I wanna say a big thank you to both Brent and Dan for having me out. I had a ton of fun. Really enjoy making videos with you guys. Hope all you viewers out there enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.